the beginning of these guys, is that right? Uh, class turbulent area, I think right here, that's where we stop. Why that? Let's go with this. Okay, is the camera on? Is it? Yes, we're not going to. Thank you, sir. We're live. Thank you. <laughs> Even the stuff before? You no, no, it? no, okay. You know, I'm going to get into trouble with that stuff. No, I'm just kidding. I doubt it. Uh, main characteristics, I said, triploblastic animal. That was one of the questions today I asked. Uh, afternoon lab, usually get it right because of morning lab, right? <laughs> That's okay. Um, I, I, it doesn't matter. Uh, but anyhow, uh, for the discussion. Uh, they are brought out of symmetry, and, and uh, that was another difference between uh, morning lab. That was another difference between uh, a silomate animal and um, and uh, cnidarians. Is that right? That's what I asked. Cnidarians and a silomate animal. Uh, flat dorsal ventrally, uh, true muscles, uh, incomplete digestive system. So they do not have a system yet, for lack of better word, I'm putting the word system in here. So a system means you have uh, a few organs. So um, incomplete, they have organs. They do not have a system. And incomplete digestive system, uh, some have eye spots like planaria, which you are seeing in the lab, you're dealing with in the lab. And then uh, most hormonaceous, another word uh, that you should know is diaceous. Is that right? Uh, the term viviparous, uh, oviparous, and uh, ovoviviparous, I gave you those those terms. I have not asked any quiz questions, but be ready for it. Be ready for those general terminology in zoology. So you should know those terms, if, you know, for the uh, animal kingdom, uh, like a human is diaceous, human is not monaceous. Okay, phylum plantia met this uh, parenchyma layer, which you will see here in a minute. I will talk about it. That's the, that's the layer which it, it came from mesoderm, number one. And that is covering up everything <coughs> between, the, uh, between the gut and, um, uh, and uh, between the gut and epidermis, the skin, tegument. They don't call it skin, they call it tegument. Okay, I forgot to open up the floor. Yes. Ah, thank you so much. Um, that way, now, we, now, now we are now we are uh, protected by a mass shooter. Is that right? That's what they call it. Nobody can get it. We are, we are, the other days that I open up the door, I guess we are not protected. That's horrible. Oh, you know, I'm being recorded it. Politics, but these are horrible. But quickly, I'm being recorded. That's fine. I don't mind it. You know, back in um, 1950s and 60s and 70s, there were drills at school. You guys don't know anything about it. You don't remember. There were drills. There were drills about atomic bombs. How, if there is an atomic attack, you should get under the tables. Those drills are gone. Nobody's worried about atomic bomb, which never happened, though, except Hiroshima. But we don't have drills about mass shooters, right? Okay. High school shooters. Some do, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, that's what I meant. We do have. We should be concerned with those. And it doesn't, they don't knock their door, hey, you're going to be next month or next week. It could happen here at the college. I'm not scaring you, I hope. Uh, my daughter goes to school here. I don't even think about it twice. But I think if somebody walks in there with a machine gun in there, I'd be the first one out of four. I say, every man run for his own. Every man runs his own. I'm just, I'll go in there my hand, man handle it. I say, no, you don't bring guns in school. That's against law. That's a person object. Okay, so. Okay, so uh, parenchyma is a layer. Uh, James, do you know anybody else coming? Anybody else? Coming, so I should uh, keep, yeah, we'll keep it locked. No, no mass shooter. It's a mass mass shooter. So we are locked. We are safe. Uh, parenchyma is a layer. I'll show you a picture of it. And in the lab, uh, you have a cross section of planaria. Uh, we, do, we did have the model of this, but we got, I don't know what happened to it. 
that disappear. Um, so they, you know, between the gut and the epidermis, between the gut and epidermis, they, all of that layer is, I might ask you what is the name of the layer, is parenchyma layer. I'll show you some picture, if you remind me. On the cross section of the animal, you will see it nicely. So anyhow, uh, they have a parenchyma layer which is filled with mesodermal cells. That's pretty much the definition of parenchyma. It's filled with mesodermal cells. Most monogenia are ectoparasites. What the term ectoparasites, it means, ecto means what, guys? Outside. Outside. So ectoparasites, uh, they cause infestation. Okay, so if you have a dog that is um, that have ticks, and you take it to the veterinarian, and the veterinarian says your dog is infected with ticks, say Mr. Vet or Dr. Vet or whatever you want to call him. My dog is infested with tick or uh, lice or, 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 or mite, what have you. Okay, so ectoparasites cause infestation. They cause infestation. Endoparasites cause infection. So now you know the difference between infestation and infection. Infestation is for outside and infection is for inside, whatever happens inside. So what am I saying? Monogenia, which we humans do not get. Fishes, get them. Fishes, the term fishes exist. Don't say, oh, I'm here. I checked with my English professor. Um, and he said, no, the term fishes do not exist. Uh, tell, take him to your zoology book. Okay, the zoology book says the term fishes exist when you are using about different type of fish. You're talking about salmon, carp, I don't know, white fish, whatever you're talking about, then you can use, you have an option of using the term fish or fishes. I hope E-S at the end, F-I-S-H-E-S. So that term exists when you're talking about a uh, different type of fish in a sentence. I hope I'm making some sense. So monogenia are, I emphasize on this, are ectoparasites of fishes, more than one type of fish, one type of fish. Uh, ba -ba -ba, all trematodes and uh, cestodes are endoparasites, so they cause infection. Uh, the uh, monogenia are, uh, they cause infestation in fishes. And then what else? Uh, indirect and direct life cycle, is a life cycle, you will see that here in a minute. And then uh, final host, which means what? Somebody, I forgot. That's where they sexually reproduce, correct? Very good. When sexual reproduction of these organs, these, I mean, I thought these animals are monaceous. Yes, they are monaceous, but still they practice sexual reproduction. They have both male and female organs inside of one organism, but the male sperm makes the sperm and travels and fertilizes the egg of maybe the same species or a, a, a different animal. The you know, same species, but a different uh, animal. I hope I'm making some sense. So anyhow, uh, final host is vertebrates in most cases. That uh, sexual reproduction happens in uh, vertebrate animals like us. And then uh, triploblastic animals, cnidarians were not. Okay, so we talked about that. Uh, body fluid moves by muscular contractions. So they have inside of the animal, if you would, there is fluid in here, in the acylomic area, there is fluid. So when they move, and you've seen them move in the lab, what happens, the fluid inside of the animal moves, and you know, uh, maybe at, at, at the food is distributed uh, uh, throughout the animal, the waste get out, and we'll talk about all of that here in a minute. So anyhow, body fluid moves by muscle. Uh, first class, I'm done with general characteristics of uh, uh, phylum uh, platy helminthes. Platy means flat, uh, helminth it means uh, warm, right? Helminth. The term helminth in general, not helmet, helminth uh, in general it means warm, any kind of warm. Any kind of warm uh, is uh, the term helminth. Okay, uh, here we go. I gave you the name of the organism. You, uh, where is Melik? 
Malik was asking me, Amir, uh, is plan area, plan area? I said, yes, plan area is plan area, but the scientific name of plan area is the Gisia uh, tig uh, tigrinia. So uh, this one, it depends what, what you have, but for lab practical or other purposes, I'll be happy you write me down the term the Gisia. There are different species of the Gisia. Okay, I hope I'm making some sense. We have black planaria and we have brown planaria, which are different species. Anyhow, uh, free living, mostly marine. I'm talking about class Tabularia, you guys. Okay, they are free living, every member, and they are marine. Uh, the GCO is not, uh, is not a marine, it's a fresh water. You're dealing with it, right? You go to the pond and you bring the pond water and putting it on top of them, they don't die, right? So, uh, but the uh, GCO uh, is a fresh water animal. But what am I saying? Mostly are marine. Uh, 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 you know, uh, planarians, of course, we talk epidermis ciliated on ventral sides, not necessarily planaria, but the rest of the species in this class are uh, ciliated epidermis and on ventral side is ciliated mouth on ventral side no anus right and I will talk about it they do not have anus so we call this type of digestive system what huh? incomplete you're right you're right say love doesn't matter if, if you're wrong I said love me Dil, uh, Dylan I'm sorry not, not, not your champ your name is like evolution it's changing at the beginning of Sohan it was uh, Dylan. Now it was Dylan, now soon it's gonna become Dylan. I don't know, what next? I'll probably call you Hey D. <laughs> different species. <laughs> different species, and new species, yeah. So anyhow, mouth on the ventral side and knowing this, so this is a good example of uh, incomplete Aisha digestive system. Is that right? Incomplete digestive system. Uh, simple life cycle, there is nothing. Gastrodermis has phagocytes to absorb food. Uh, Planaria excrete water out. Remember, these are, as I said, these are freshwater animals. So constantly water goes inside of the animal by the process of osmosis. They have more stuff inside of the animal than the outside. And you learn this in um, uh, Protista, how they get rid of excess water. Same as these guys, they have excess water which it gets out through excretory system, which I will talk about it here in a minute. So they have, uh, they live in fresh water, so they have excess water going out. Uh, flame cells, of course, that's for osmoregulations, osmosis. Os the term osmoregulation, it means excess water going in, so they, the animal came up with a system and I will talk about it with it. Uh, you might think, oh, they have a system like our nervous system or our urinary system. No, they do not have a system yet. For lack of better word, I'm saying they came up with a setup here. They came up with a setup to get rid of that excess water. Okay? Uh, I'm trying to stay away from the word system. Okay, uh, three types of neurons, sensory, motor, and association neuron. We talked about this uh, exam number one, right? Remember, sensory neuron goes to spinal cord, spinal cord association neuron, and from spinal cord back to the arm, to the muscle, is your motor neuron. You remember that from a century ago, two or three centuries ago, whenever it was. Uh, Ocelia, they are light sensitive eye spots, so uh, not all of them have them. Not all species in this phylum have eye spot, okay? And what they are, they're light sensitive. If I ask you guys to close your eyes, for example, close your eyes right now. If, it, if I ask you guys to close your eyes and I turn off the lights on and off, what will happen? Can you sense it? If there's no noise, can you sense there's a light coming on? Sure. That's what these guys are. They can detect light intensity, but they cannot form image. Okay, you will see later on during semester when I talk about octopus, squid, they can form image. Okay, those are the very first species we will talk about they can form image. But these guys, whatever eyes we talk about until octopus, squid, no image is formed. It's just light intensity. 
they can detect that. Okay, uh, one other organism you saw here before, um, euglena. They had stigma, you remember that? Stigma was to detect light intensity. They go and do photosynthesis. These guys don't do photosynthesis. Okay, and your, some of your experiments are with light intensity in the lab. Okay, so anyhow, they have bacilli to detect, uh, they are exposed to detect light intensity. Uh, asexual regeneration, stem cells in the middle of the animal. Uh, maybe there are, there are some studies they, they, they say, I gave you, did I give you the name of the stem cells? I hope I gave you the name of the stem cells. Maybe next slide. Uh, but anyhow, uh, asexual regeneration, you know you cut the animal. Some of you are doing this. You cut the animal right in the middle, so the animal is going to grow back. Okay? Usually the top portion grows faster, more efficiently, and the bottom portion, when you cut it like this, uh, they usually grow slower, but eventually they will grow. Turbularians are monations, but practice cross-fertilization. What that means, you have another planaria here, Oh, these are heavy, and I have a tennis elbow. I don't know. Maybe I should not. Maybe the maybe next time you see me with my arm. Oh. Marco, you're here today. Wow, we missed you, son, the other day. Um, it's good to see you. So maybe you see Marco. Maybe you see my arm with uh, hanging on my neck next time. When you see me, uh, I gotta go to doctor see what the problem is. But anyhow, so two organisms, same species, they come together, even though they can fertilize within the animal, fertilization can happen. What happens? You move sideways? They, they the come, usually, they come uh, together and they exchange uh, sperm, gametes. One usually gives sperm to the other one and that's how, but in Niderians, you saw the penis fencing happen in Niderians uh, in the video. So they don't do that. They don't go at it and, you know, they just exchange in a civilized manner. They change, <laughs> they change, uh, uh, exchange gametes. You know, one sperm gives to the other. Yes, ma'am? So for the monotonous animals? Monotonous animals. Can they suffer? Yes. Self-fertilization can happen. Yes, they do, uh, they do self fertilization, uh, but uh, in most cases, as I wrote down, most cases, uh, but they practice uh, uh, cross fertilization. So they prefer cross fertilization? Yes, of course. For what reason? Increases diversity even further. Yeah. Do they know? Do they know? Do they know? Do they know? Uh, they come, two species come together and they change nuclear, uh, they change gametes, one gives sperm to the other one. Yeah, they know. What if you they cut know. one in half and then both of them regenerate? Mm -hmm. they, would they know that cross fertilizing is essentially not really that distinct from if they're self fertilizing? I'm not sure what you're asking. Uh, 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 huh? If you cut them in half completely, yeah, and then they right. both regenerate. And then, they both regenerate. And then uh -huh. those two halves cross fertilize. Sure, why not? Yeah, they, they, it, have, it can happen. Yes, ma'am. Question on that one. No, don't worry about it. Okay, uh, fertilization in female oviduct. Okay, we have the model here, and we can talk about that. Ah, here we go. I gave you the term. Neoblasts are the stem cells that they can, uh, when you cut the animal in half, they, you can re they will, uh, they are stem cells, they will regenerate, they will grow, they multiply, they go mitosis, and then some of them differentiate because their stem cells differentiate to uh, gastrodermis cells, some of them differentiate to flame cells, and so on and so forth. So stem cells are regeneration. They are carnivorous animals, of course, we ask for liver, uh, and, uh, and Melissa was kind enough to bring a whole bunch of liver for us, I can take the rest of it home and eat it. Was it pork liver or cow liver? Beef. Oh, beef liver, so I can eat it. If it was pork, I could not. Yes? Um, so, the neoblasts can differentiate into any kind of tissue. Right. Okay. Uh, any kind of cells. Yeah. Any kind of cells. They're yeah. stem cells. Yes. So what else? Are potential. There's only one type of neoblast. Yes, that, that would be considered as a totipotent okay. cell. The neoblasts, which uh, in the last uh, overhead, um, the PowerPoints, I said they are usually accumulated right in the middle of the animal. 
based on research. They are all over, but right here it seems like it, it, they are more, more uh, concentrated in the scent. I hope I'm making sense. Uh, metabolic waste diffuses out uh, the, uh, through the body wall. The raptide cells, they are uh, release some kind of mucousy ma material, so make the animal kind of uh, uh, gliding. I don't know what is the right word, and that's not coming to my brain right now. Um, so it makes the animal uh, like an eel. Have you guys touched an eel? Anyhow. Uh, so that's what I'm saying. That's what the raptide cells are. Three types of muscles, longitudinal, circular, and radial. Make sure in the lab you can see all three of them on the slides, on the microscopic slides. You see all, I'll not go over them here in a minute. Hang on, I'll show you a picture. And a picture in biology says more than a million words. In economics, political science, all other fields, music, a picture says more than a thousand words. In biology, a picture says more than a million words. Who said that? Amir Sadi, right? You can quote me on your books. Your, your future books or articles, journals, whatever you publish later on in your life. Who said that? Amir Sadi, right? Oh, sorry. Uh, three types of one. Uh, parenchymal cells, yes, as I talked about that, the parenchymal layer, parenchymal cells, uh, which are in the middle of the animal, and uh, proteinephilia, which are flame cells, and I will talk about, uh, well, okay, let's talk about it. Pro we have proto protonephidia and metanephidia. The protonephidia, evolutionary-wise, these are the organisms that evolved at the beginning, the excretory system at the beginning to get rid of excess uh, material, the fluid excess material. And usually what happens, they release their waste material into a silomate area um, or pseudocilomate area, but the metanephridia type system like us, they release it into uh, silomate area. That's, those are the two main differences between protonephridia and metanephridia. But again, if you read your textbook and you read other sources, you might become more confused than what I said. So I'm not too crazy. I used to ask a lot of questions about this one. But now it's not clear um, what they're talking about. Okay, let's go. Uh, digestive system. Are you guys ready? Let's talk about digestive system first. All of them are up here. Uh, digestive system, you have a powerful pharynx, which uh, protrude, protrude, the term protrude comes out, comes out of the animal, and it's like a vacuum. It sucks. When it sucks water, of course, there is food and nutrient in there. Uh, so they usually, when they glide over to your beef or chicken or right here, there is water surrounding. This is, these are aquatic animals. But they can, with this, they are sucking the liver, or I hope I'm making some sense. And they're in the middle of the animal. So the mouth is right here. That would be the mouth. This is the pharynx, right? Here is the pharynx, and the, the opening right here is the mouth. And of course, anus too, very good. The waste, the solid waste material they cannot digest. I will talk about uh, the um, excretory system here in a minute, uh, but the solid waste material comes in here. So what happens when they digest the food, they suck the food into the di uh, gastrovascular cavity right here, their cells to absorb, you know, they phagocytize the food and nutrient here, but the branches, if you would look at these models, this is not a good model, but this is a model right here, the branches at the end of the, the in this model, the, the red is gastrovascular cavity, and at the end, these branches, this was a lab practical exam question, is called diverticulum. Diverticulum are the branches at the end of the gastrovascular cavity. We human also have diverticulum. And where is that, you think? I didn't talk about it in this class. They're in large intestine. And then they get inflamed, they get bacteria collection in them, and that's not nice, that's not, it's a kind of, um, not a healthy situation. Okay, so we do have uh, these uh, little pockets, pouches they call them, uh, when you take anatomy, they call them uh, the particulum, which we really have. Okay, so right there. <clears throat> then, the nervous system, if you would, 
if you look at these models, whatever is white in here, that is your nervous system, okay, on these models, both of these models. The white is nervous system. And they have accumulation of uh, neurons around the eye spots, a lot of neurons. They do not have the term, uh, they do not have brain. These, we do not call these brain. A definition of a brain is when an animal can uh, get the information and analyze it, okay? But these guys cannot analyze the information, so they call them neural ganglia. So neural ganglia is where there is a lot of accumulation of nerve in the anterior portion, in the anterior, in the head region of the animal. And then their nervous system, the nervous, again I'll use the term system, the nervous setup is, it's like a ladder, if you would, so two nerve cords right here, nerve cord, nerve cord, and they're connected together by transverse nerve, right here, just like a ladder, as I said. And then, uh, at the end, uh, and then they have some lateral nerve, they didn't label it here, if you would. Uh, I, I, I see your hand, just hang on. Uh, 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 I will get to it. And these are called lateral nerve, you guys, right here, all of the white. And this is transverse nerves right here, and this is the nerve cord. You guys see that all of that in here? So in, in this model, it's a little bit heavy for my arm. I'll see what doctor says. If says don't pick up heavy stuff. I will not pick up heavy stuff. I, I will ask uh, Dylan. Dylan, is that this correct enough? Yeah. Huh? Dylan? Mm -hmm. Like uh, Bob Dylan? Mm -hmm. Like Bob Dylan. You know, that. Just maybe tomorrow I'll call you Bob. You know? <laughs> so I will ask Dylan to pick this up for us and hold it up so I can show it to you. But here's a nerve cord, here are transverse nerves, and here's a lateral nerve. There should be another one here too. What happens, you guys, with the nervous system? With the nervous system you will see for the rest of animals until arthropods, not the uh, starfish. All the way to the arthropods are like this. They're like a ladder. Okay. Again, I said nervous system, nervous setup. If you, uh, they are like in that. Ruben, you had a question a long time ago. Isn't the nerve ganglion a prototype of the brain? Yes, if you want to, but, but in, in biology, zoology, they don't call it a brain yet. Because right. it's not that sophisticated, it cannot analyze the information. But it's the first step to go into yes. the brain. Yes. yes, if you want to get there, yes, yes. Um, do you, so like, if you look on that model, there's like, Nerves that are in front of the eye spots that like they're what? Nerves that are what? In, like in front of the eye spots that like come together and point at the top. Mm -hmm. Is those both nerve cords and then still, no, still cerebral ganglion. Okay, uh, so that he, whole part. He's call, in this one called neural ganglion. I call it in another PowerPoint cerebral ganglion. Okay. We no, call same it thing. Yes, test, uh, that's fine because it's in my PowerPoint. Yes. Okay. Uh, reproductive system. Again, reproductive setup. You have ovary, oviduct on these models. If I have, uh, yes, the oviduct is missing. This is ovary right here. And oviduct is not missing, but right here. It's a red, is oviduct right here. And then um, you have the testes. Uh, these are yolk glands. The orange are yolk glands. And the testes is supposed to be on the other side right here. The blue are the testes on this model. Um, on this model, if you would, I cannot pick it up, guys. I'm sorry about that. Uh, please forgive me. Uh, the blue is all testes, and the yellow is uh, ovary, and the yellow line, you guys see that? The yellow line is the oviduct. Okay, those are pretty much I want you to stick with. Then there's other structures in here. Uh, I'm not too crazy about it for now. Okay. Uh, that is pretty much it. I'm not worried about penis, your glands. Well, I talked about your glands, yes. Uh, genital pore, yes, they do have genital pore, uh, but I'm not too crazy about it. Then, the last one is your excretory system, which in this model, it is the green, and in this model, also is green. So, in this, both of these models, let's talk about this model. If you look at, of course, there, uh, there, uh, you can see like the tubes in there. So those tubing are called excretory canal. They're like a canal. And then at the beginning of them, 
doesn't show very well on that on this model, but it does show it in this model. If you look at it right here, you see the beginning of it, there are flame cells. Right here, we have a model of flame cell. Hushbreed, yes, am I making some sense? Okay, I know it was urgent something that day you have to go. I'm not taking attendance for the lecture, but what happens, do you remember the 24 hour law? Right? Do you remember the 24 hour law? Yes. Ah, Maria, oh, you don't remember? I said that the very first day. You only have 24 hours to go back and rewrite your notes and contemplate what we talked, what, what it was discussed in the lecture. But of course, it's being recorded me on YouTube. You don't show up, right? But again, it, it's a different environment than you come in here and you discuss, you ask questions, you actually are in person. But in, okay, it's okay. So at the beginning is uh, flame cells, right? Here, so those flame cells, and I'll show you some pictures, they have cilia or flagella, and they push uh, the waste material out into the duct and from duct when animals flip they push the waste material through excretory pore. This model has a nice excretory pore here. Okay, if you look at the tegument right here, if you're sitting up front you could see that there is a green dot right here, that green dot is excretory pore. And how does the material come out? You know, the, the cilia in the flame cells push the waste material, they go into the duct, the animal moves, and that movement cause the, the, the waste material come out of the, the duct, the duct system. Okay, I hope, I hope I made some sense about, uh, about the uh, flame cells exercise. Here we go, this is the flame cells. You do have the only, on all of these models, this is, this is the flame cell we have here. So, and these cells, of course, in the large, but they are scattered at the beginning of the system, right here. They are here, and they, and they, this is a duct. This is a flagellum right here, and they, when the um, waste material is synthesized, they, the flagellum pushes into the duct, and the, when the animals move, then um, it pushes outside of the animal. So that, right here, you have flame cells, as I've shown in the model, right here, then you have uh, osmoregulatory tube, I call it uh, excretory canals, and then they end up to the outside cell. Uh, here is the ovary of the duct. We talked about all of these testes. Do not worry about penis, seminal vesicle, seminal receptacles, vagina, all of that. I'm not worried about it too much. But as long as you know there is a passage for the sperm to travel, and go through the oviduct and fertilize the eggs. Uh, here's the gastrovascular cavity, uh, cerebral ganglion. Uh, last PowerPoint says a neural ganglion. Uh, this is your textbook saying it, cerebral ganglion. The last one, I got it from another one, uh, but that's pretty much accumulation of the nerves. And this looks like the ladder. And here's a diverticulum, which we talked about, the branches, intestine, he's calling it. I call it gastrovascular cavity. Uh, pharyngeal uh, chambers, yes, I will, you have it in the lab, mouth, uh, transfer nerves and everything else. You had a question on them, or somebody had a question on them? No? Should I go or should I stay? Here's a cross section of the animal. Here, this is all of the red you see, all of that red is your gastrovascular cavity. Okay, your text is calling it intestine. And right here is a pharynx which you do have it on these models, if you would. This would be, that would be pharynx. This would be pharynx. This would be pharynx. This would be pharynx right here. This is all pharynx, okay, right here. So that's the one that protrude out and suck food. Uh, so you have pharynx right here, intestine, he's calling it, I'd like to call it gastrovascular cavity. Here, you do have slide of this in the lab. So let's go over what is it that you see on the microscope in the lab. Um, of course, you see the epidermis ciliate on the bottom, and then you have the dual glands, adhesive glands, that's what I say, the, uh, the raptoid glands, dual glands, they release mucus a little bit. And then uh, here's your parenchymal layer. All of that, they, uh, remember, 
we talk, I talked about this, you, you might get the impression that this is empty space. It's not. Look at the slides in the lab. All of that space is filled with something red in your slide. Here, in order to make it simple and try to show other structures in here as well, that's why they left it like this. Am I making some sense, everybody? So this area should be filled with cells if you look at your slides. I should have put the slides of what you have in the lab in here and compare it a little bit. Sorry about that. But anyhow, uh, rhabdite cells, same thing. Then you have the gland cells. I'm not, you cannot see these in the lab. All of these, uh, you cannot see them in the lab, on the microscope. Epidermis, of course, you can see it. Circular muscles is right under the epidermis. So circular muscles run this way. Okay, that's what circular muscles run. And then you have the pharynx. There is a space out of pharynx. It's called pharyngeal cavity right here. And then uh, what else? Columnar cells, I'm not too crazy. We talked about that. That's your uh, intestine. Your textbook is calling it intestine, cross section of the intestine, which we already saw in the models. Parenchymal muscles, another name for it is rhabdoid cells. You remember? The, the, the muscles that from here to here, you can see them under the microscope under 40x. Under 10x, might not be visible, but you can see them clearly on the 40x when these muscles run from uh, the, uh, the ventral side of the animal to the dorsal side of the animal. So it is called, he's calling it parenchymal cell muscles. I called it uh, uh, radial radio muscles. Thank you. Then you have your longitudinal muscles, which runs this way. So these are all longitudinal muscles. Longitudinal muscles, circular muscles, uh, uh, radial muscles, you see it under 40 years. Slide in the microscope in the lab. Do I make sense? I've been getting on the screen too. Maybe I should get a couple of points. Is it proven? Yeah. Are you good? Yeah. I know you're good, but are you better? Yeah. Very good. Okay. So, uh, and then that's pretty much it. Uh, cilia, you will not see the cilia in the uh, lab on the microscope. And then you have the nerve. Yes. You will see 